Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Ruggett here from Avon High School. We're going to look at another video from topic 812, this time example 2, where we're going to still be using the washer method to revolve around an axis other than an x-axis or y-axis, but this time that axis is indeed going to be horizontal. And a special note, this is truly AB material, but we are learning this uh, in 2020 due to coronavirus. So, taking a look at this example, you might have uh, possibly tuned into my video that covered example one. We're going to scroll down. This is page 22 of your notes packet and look at example two. And again, I've already taken the time to graph these uh, functions so that we don't, and the relations, so that we don't have to spend time with that. So again, the, the problem reads, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graphs y equal x squared plus 1, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equal 1, this time about the line y equal negative 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first of all draw in that line y equal negative 2, which would be down here that red line is serving as the x-axis. So this will serve as our axis of revolution. And remember, I always like to sketch that in with a dashed line. And then our shaded region that we're revolving is this piece once again. Okay, now to be very effective with this, what you want to do is start establishing some very consistent approaches. And what I like to recommend is to draw in those representative rectangles. The representative rectangles that you draw for washer method always start at the axis of revolution. And then the first one goes up to the farthest boundary of your shaded region, which in this case would be the parabola or the blue graph. And as we have said before, that is your capital R, your large radius. We do the same thing with the lower radius. The smaller radius emanate from the axis of revolution, but this time he would stop at the nearest boundary, which would be that x-axis in this case. So we set up our general framework next for our washer method. Volume would equal pi times the integration with some boundaries that we'll fill in here in a bit. And then we know that we have a capital R squared minus a little r squared. And sometimes it can be helpful if off to the side you want to state what the r's are, what the r's are. Now you have to decide, is this going to be a setup with respect to x or with respect to y? So you'll look at that graph, you take your finger and thumb, you put that right along the width here and you would establish that these are certainly delta x's. So your radius values is a, uh, is a setup with respect to x. And so we see the capital R would be the top curve minus the bottom. Top curve already is written in terms of x. We can't get it any better than that. And then we would subtract the bottom which is minus negative 2. And you can see how that will simplify to x squared plus 3 eventually. Okay, next up, little r is going to be found the same way. The top is the x-axis, also known as y equals 0. Subtract the bottom, which is negative 2, and you would find out that you get positive 2, which makes a lot of sense because that little r always is going to have a distance of 2, no matter where you place it. So these are the things that you're going to place inside of your integral, and each would get squared by virtue of the washer method setup. And the washer method would be a dx setup here. Speaking of dx, we look at the boundaries here. The far left of the yellow shaded region looks like it's a one. The far right, I'm sorry, the far left looks like it's a zero. And the far right looks like it's a one. And so there is your setup. And quite often that might be all that you have to do, especially for a lot of multiple choice questions. However, we're gonna go ahead and expand this out. and We're gonna integrate this by hand because it really won't take too long. So if we expand out the x squared plus three, we would get x to the fourth plus six x squared plus nine. And then we would have another plus nine after we square the three, except it would be a subtraction of nine. Remember, this minus is not involved into that squaring process at all, I believe. And why did I even say that that's a 3? That's not making much sense. That should be a 2, right? Because it goes back to this value here squared. So I'm sorry. So we would actually have x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 9 minus 
2 squared, which is 4. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify one last time. Hopefully I don't mess this one up. x to the 4th plus 6x squared plus 5. And here we go. So when we anti-differentiate x to the 4th, we get x to the 5th over 5 x squared would become x, six, I'm sorry, 6x squared would become 6x cubed over 3, which I believe is just 2x cubed if it simplifies, and then 5 integrates to be 5x, and then fortunately for us, we have probably the two easiest boundaries of all. So we go ahead and plug in our 1, and that would give us 1 to the 5th, which is five, 1 over 5, 2 times 1 cubed is 2, 5 times 1 is, of course, 5 in that case. And by the time we multiply or add all these things together, uh, get a common denominator of 5. I believe we're looking at a 1 plus a 10 plus a 25. And that would be 36 pi over 5. All right. There's only one more example left with the washer method revolving things around axes other than the x or y axis, and that will pretty much wrap up what we need to know out of Unit 8. So hopefully this helps, and we'll see you at the next video.